Well, hey guys, so for today's q and I'm going to be addressing all of your questions about contact dermatitis. It's something that comes up a lot in the comments of my videos, particularly those where you guys are asking me about certain skincare products that I've pointed out or skincare products that I've reviewed. And uh, that's with, uh, with uh, regards to contact dermatitis and allergic contact dermatitis versus irritant. What's the difference? How does this relate to eczema? Those sorts of things. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Andrea. I'm a dermatologist. I film Day in the Life of a Dermatologist vlogs as well as a Friday skincare Q&A focused on a skincare topic that is uh, of common interest um, in the comment section of my channel. So if this uh, topic interests you, I hope that you'll stick around. So what is contact dermatitis? Well, contact dermatitis is a type of rash in the family of rashes known as an eczema or an itchy type of rash. And it is the result of something coming into contact with your skin, just as the name implies, and eliciting an immune response that causes an itchy rash in that location. Almost anyone can develop a contact dermatitis. And in today's video, I'll go over some of the most common uh, causes of contact dermatitis, including products in which they're found in. Now, as I mentioned, we get a contact dermatitis when something that we're exposed to comes in contact with our skin. Some rashes will happen right away. However, most take some time to appear, up to two to three days even. And I think what is most confusing is many people say, well, I've been coming in contact with this uh, skincare product or this uh, reagent on my skin for many, many years and never had a problem with it. Well, here's the funny thing about contact dermatitis. It is actually uh, an, a sensitization and by definition requires that you have been exposed to it in the past or currently. And so that contact sensitization, however, can occur at any time. So it can and frequently does occur to things that you have used for many years with no prior problem and then suddenly develop a sensitivity to. Take certain part perfumes, fragrances, cosmetics. If you're loyal to a certain skincare brand and then all of a sudden your skincare is going, going berserk, um, you may be quick to dismiss the skincare product, but it in fact could be the culprit uh, because you've been using it for so long, you may have developed a sensitivity to an ingredient in the skincare product. This is not uncommon. This type of contact dermatitis uh, in which you become sensitized to a um, an ingredient or an allergen is known as allergic contact dermatitis. So a little bit more about allergic contact dermatitis. Like I said, this is a skin rash that is a manifestation of an allergy to an antigen or an allergen present in something that is coming in contact with your skin, whether that be a cosmetic or um, some sort of plant from the environment. I think a classic example of allergic contact dermatitis that we may all be familiar with is poison ivy. Another common cause of allergic contact dermatitis is nickel. You may be aware of having a nickel allergy if you develop itchy rashes on your abdomen underneath uh, a belt buckle, for example, or underneath a um, metal wristwatch, around your ears if you wear nickel jewelry, that sort of thing, around your neck with particular necklaces. This is not uncommon. This can occur with makeup that you applied maybe only one or two times more recently for the and is new to you or with makeup that you have used for many years um, and is not new to you. And healthcare providers in particular are intimately aware of the fact that latex glove allergy is not uncommon as well. Now I mentioned allergic contact dermatitis in which you develop a rash to something that comes in contact with the skin that you have become sensitized to and are now subsequently allergic to. There's also another type of contact dermatitis called irritant contact dermatitis. Irritant contact dermatitis is even more common than allergic contact dermatitis. It is a type of skin rash that, like allergic contact dermatitis, results in a rash after something has come in contact with the skin. However, unlike allergic contact dermatitis, this does not require the individual to become sensitized to that, to an ingredient in that, um, in that thing. 
um, and it is not an allergy. It is irritation as a result of, of, the, um, uh, of the ingredient or component coming in contact with your skin. So it's an irritant, not an allergen. This can happen in anyone, and it does not require prior exposure, unlike allergic contact dermatitis. And it can look like many, many things. Acne, for example, dark under eye circles, dry cracked hands, or irritated skin around your mouth, and excessively dry or chapped lips. If the irritant is potent enough, it can actually be quite toxic to the skin barrier and cause a pretty severe rash. This happens when the skin is quickly irritated because the barrier is so disrupted by the uh, irritating substance. If you've ever been unfortunate enough to have ble a bleach put on your skin or got rid battery acid, these types of uh, irritant dermatitis are, are actually quite, quite destructive. However, you can also develop irritant dermatitis to something as benign as water. Certain foods can irritate the skin when put on and left on the surface. For example, papaya, fruit extracts, lemon peel, grapefruit, citrus extracts, these can all irritate the skin barrier quite significantly. Unfortunately, these are present in many, many cosmetics um, and a lot of skin high-end skincare products. Unlike allergic contact dermatitis, it occurs generally very quickly after exposure, whereas allergic contact dermatitis, that rash will not manifest until sometimes out to a few days as well. And they can also have a, a mixed bag of both things going on. You maybe first uh, develop an irritant dermatitis and the skin barrier becomes so impaired and inflamed that you are now susceptible, susceptible to becoming sensitized to things that come in contact with your skin and then developing an allergic contact dermatitis on top. That's not uncommon. So let's go over some common causes of allergic contact dermatitis. I already mentioned what everyone's familiar with and that's of course poison ivy as well as nickel. But for people chiming in on my channel and asking comments about what things to avoid in skincare products, I think it's most relevant to address the common allergens that are found in many um, cosmetics and over-the-counter skincare products and makeups, etc. So fragrance, you will frequently hear me bemoan the shortcomings of fragrance added to skincare ingredients, but fragrance allergy is probably one of the most common. And I always, always, uh, a caution you did. I always always mention to err on the side of caution and select products that are fragrance free. Um, I also caution you to specifically look for the words fragrance free and not unscented. When a product is labeled unscented, what this means is that the manufacturer has added something called masking fragrance to mask the odor of fragrance that is already in the product. So it is in fact fragrance containing and something that you can become allergic to. Whereas fragrance free implies that there is no fragrance. Also uh, read carefully the term free of synthetic fragrance because all natural fragrance can also be problematic. Um, a few uh, videos back I posted a review on uh, essential oils which I encourage you to check out if you missed it. Um, but it, you'll recall from that video that it is not uncommon for people to develop also allergic contact dermatitis to essential oils. They're very very popular in skincare right now. Um, however the immune system, our immune system does not like us putting them on our skin. Um, we, it is not uncommon for people to develop allergies to these. Um, and as I said, you may be someone who has used essential oils for many years and had no problem with them, but that does not mean that you cannot develop an allergy to them um, at any point. One common way that um, allergies to essential oils will manifest is in individuals who use those diffusers, for example, and um, therefore the allergen is aerosolized. The aerosolized allergen settles on um, the thin eyelid skin um, and the skin around our eyes and leads to a chronic irritant and chronic allergic contact dermatitis around the eyes, which can drive some of the concern of dark circles under your eyes because you're chronically rubbing, which is chronically uh, causing irritation in the skin, making the blood vessels around the eyes and the skin leak 
leaky and when they leak out uh, fluid, that fluid leads to a dark discoloration around the eyes. So essential oils are a culprit ingredient for sure. Um, one of the most problematic I think is tea tree oil. A lot of people want to use tea tree oil in their acne care as an essential oil. There, And there is some evidence that tea tree oil can help clear some of the lesions of acne, but it has such a risk of developing the allergic contact dermatitis that uh, it is always best to err on the side of caution of, of avoiding it and selecting instead a standard of care acne ingredient like benzoyl peroxide or salicylic acid because those are just as good um, at uh, clearing the lesions of acne. But if you're really, really fond of tea tree oil, my um, second recommendation would be to look for it in a wash form in which you apply it to the skin as a wash, let it sit on the skin for maybe a few minutes, and then you remove it. Do not leave it on the skin. That brings me to my next cosmetic uh, that is frequently a culprit, and that is your makeup remover wipes and your micellar waters. These tend to contain things in them, uh, namely certain preservatives that people frequently can develop an allergy to. And they're problematic because the longer these ingredients sit on the skin, the more likely an individual is to develop an allergy to them. One common preservative found in makeup wipes, baby wipes, uh, for example, it's something called methylchloroisothiazinolum. Don't worry, I will spell that down below. It is a long, long name. You may hear it referred to as MCI. This is not a dangerous ingredient. It's not associated with any um, rele It's not associated with any true cancer risk. Um, it is not a demon ingredient. It is safe. But when left on the skin, can uh, result in the individual who is using a product containing it. When left on the skin, can result in one of these allergic contact dermatitis. That's a real risk with using MCI, um, not any other uh, health, care, health risk. Likewise, parabens can, can be problematic, um, but are safe otherwise. Lanolin is another ingredient that is commonly found in moisturizers. It is derived from the all-natural sheep's fleece and uh, is, also in com is also found in products like Lanolips. It's soothing, it's an emollient, but it's not uncommon to develop an allergy to lanolin as well. Then another um, common set of allergens are those that are found in your uh, nail polishes and shellacs and nail hardeners. Um, things like formaldehyde and um, acrylates, um, cyanoacrylates, things that harden the glues, the shellacs. Um, all of these things um, individuals can and frequently do become allergic to. They can cause uh, rashes around the nail beds. They can lend themselves to brittle nails, but probably even more common, you know, we always are touching our face and um, this too can cause chronic rashes around the eyes. So be aware that your your manicure and your, your nail um, uh, care may be, may be a culprit in your life. Now I talked about some of the most common uh, ingredients or things that cause allergic contact dermatitis. What about irritant contact dermatitis? If you'll recall, irritant contact dermatitis is not an allergy, but rather uh, the result of, of the substance just plain being irritating on the skin. Things that most commonly do this, uh, believe it or not, are water, sweat, um, alcohols, harsh alcohols in the skin. Um, sometimes aggressively rubbing the skin can lend itself to an irritant dermatitis when you're also using a lot of harsh astringents and toners, dries out the skin, desiccates the skin barrier, disrupts the, uh, the shape of the, the skin cells, and it is basically disruptive to the skin barrier. Um, water and sweat are irritants because they, um, as water and, and or sweat is evaporating from the skin surface, it pulls water out of your skin, lending itself to something called transepidermal water loss, which leads to dryness of the skin. It's parched, it's flaky, scaly, dull, lifeless looking. So I recommend if you, you can figure out what it is that you're coming in contact with that may be causing the problem, um, first and foremost, avoid that at all costs. It can be difficult, harder, harder to do sometimes than it sounds, uh, particularly in the case of certain um, preservatives and things that are found uh, so ubiquitously in, in, the, in skincare. 
Um, but the way to figure it out for sure is to uh, see a dermatologist for evaluation and management. Um, they will uh, examine the rash that you have and look at your um, potential offending um, products, so bring those in with you. And then if they likewise suspect that, they can perform something called patch testing. Uh, which is the way to diagnose an allergic contact dermatitis. And essentially what this is, it's very different from uh, allergy testing that an allergist would do. What we're talking about here with regards to the skin is very, very different than what an allergist would test you for with prick testing, okay? So patch testing for allergic contact dermatitis that a dermatologist would perform involves putting um, patches of uh, little wells on your back and each of the wells contains the culprit um, allergen, like fragrance, for example, in one little well, um, some preservatives, uh, maybe a sample of a cream that you're using, many, many, many things. Um, that stays on your back for uh, 48 hours, and then you return to the office, and the strips are removed, and the where the little wells were in place are marked and read uh, um, by the uh, interpreting uh, healthcare provider as being either either positive or negative for a reaction. You then come back for some additional readings because as I mentioned before, it can take these rashes some time to develop. So after all of the readings are complete, uh, the healthcare provider puts all the information together and comes up with a, a conclusion to help you uh, identify what it is that you're coming in contact with that you're allergic to. They then put together um, their recommendations for how to avoid that product. Uh, so that would be my recommendation if, if you're struggling with this or suspect that you are, is, is to, to get in to see a, a dermatologist for evaluation and management. But in the meantime, try your best to avoid these things. For example, stop wearing jewelry, stop painting your nails, stop wearing makeup. Um, so you guys frequently ask me if I can recommend some skincare products that are free of these common allergens and common irritants and what are good ones to look for versus uh, you know what we're told in the store. Um, there are many. Um, my favorite brands are, are Vanny Cream is a brand that makes um, skincare products that uh, are very, very safe for use uh, in those who uh, may be going through an allergic contact dermatitis or for those who just have very sensitive skin or rosacea prone skin uh, because all of their products are free of common allergens. Likewise, CeraVe for the most part is uh, also a good um, brand to go with um, because it too is largely fragrance free and free of common allergens. Um, in Monday's video, I will do a special video on my skincare favorites that are great for uh, contact dermatitis folks, for rosacea prone folks, uh, easily irritated skin, um, that sort of thing. So stay tuned for that video. I'll be reviewing all of my favorite skincare products. But um, I hope today's Q&A was helpful to you guys. Uh, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys in my next Q&A.